President Trump, meanwhile, embracing Kim Jong-un's insult of presidential candidate Joe Biden during a news conference in Japan, calling the former vice president low IQ as he ramps up his attacks on the Democratic presidential frontrunner. Let's bring in Fox News media analyst Howard Kurtz. Hey, Howie, good morning. Hey, Sandra, good morning to you. So what exactly is happening here? and what, What's the response been so far? You know, President Trump could have enjoyed the sumo wrestling and hanging with the emperor in this largely ceremonial visit to Japan. That's what most presidents have done, uh, use the world stage as an escape from the problems back home. Bill Clinton used to get angry with reporters and they'd bring up, you know, Monica Lewinsky or Whitewater on these foreign visits. But that's not Donald Trump. And I think he could have skated if he had attacked Joe Biden on his own, even on foreign soil, which a lot of people think, you know, it violates an American norm. But by tying it, embracing, as you say, what a murderous North Korean dictator had to say about Joe Biden, and then doubling down in the news conference that you played the clip from uh, a short while ago, uh, I think that crossed a bright red line, uh, even for a president who delights in shattering political norms. And as you note, uh, some uh, conservatives in the media even thought that he went too far. And that's that's the tell here, because, of course, you would expect Democrats and liberals to pile on the president, especially if he's attacking Joe Biden uh, from halfway around the world. But I've seen a number of conservative commentators here on Fox and elsewhere, and Republican Congressman Pete King said uh, this was wrong and politics should stop at the water's edge. So by doing that, I think uh, the president, um, you know, appeared to be embracing Kim Jong-un at a time when he's resumed nuclear testing, even though the president is playing that down, members of his own staff are not. So that, I think, has been a real uh, finger in the eye and probably not a good look when the president is traveling abroad. Now on to Michael Avenatti, the now infamous, infamous anti-Trump attorney that so many have come to know over the last couple of years. He's going to have a busy day in Manhattan court. What's happening with Michael Avenatti? Howard. Uh, two different arraignments that shows you the depth of Avenatti's legal problems. In one case, uh, he's accused, as many people have heard, of stealing $300,000 in book deal money from uh, his former porn star client, Stormy Daniels. In the other case, uh, allegations of a massive extortion scheme aimed at Nike, where he threatened the company allegedly and said he would knock $10 billion off its market cap. There's a third embezzlement case as well. Uh, this is a guy who used to go on TV regularly and lecture everybody else on ethics. And I think it underscores, Sandra, how it was CNN, MSNBC, and other news outlets built him up into this celebrity, into this anti-Trump pundit. Uh, and I think it's fair to say now he's entitled to the presumption of innocence, but misjudge his character. I haven't heard anybody from those outlets say, you know what, maybe uh, we shouldn't have put him on so often. Maybe uh, Avenatti was not the person who we thought he was. It's, it's crazy to think about how all of this was going on while he continued making all those TV appearances and while you say he kept going on TV he was certainly invited and welcomed onto many networks across the board Howie but no one and acknowledging how badly they misjudged his character I haven't really seen it and some of them indulged his fantasy that he was gonna run for president that's a real uh, head smacker right now in light of these legal issues very interesting we'll see how all of that turns out with Michael Avenatti in court uh, I believe facing one, not one, but two arraignments. So we'll be following that. Howard Kurtz, great to see you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Howie.